The realities of climate change can at times feel overwhelming. The damage affects our ecosystems, economies, and communities, but also our mental health. Daniel Dodgen is a senior advisor with the Administration for Strategic Preparedness and Response in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And he explains the relationship between climate change and mental health and why it is important to address. Daniel, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell us about this relationship between mental health and climate change. Why is this important to think about? Well, I think it's important for a couple of reasons. First off, health and mental health are inseparable. So anything that affects our health affects our mental health. And we know a little bit more about the specific effects of climate change on mental health because of some of the great research that people have been doing in the last few years. For a lot of people, it's obvious that climate change, there's more particulate matter, and then you have problems with your lungs, or you know, vectors of disease can live at different places than they used to, which spreads those diseases further. But mental health, I don't know if people are as familiar with those concepts. It's a great question, and I would say there's four basic things that are helpful to know. One, extreme weather events have significant psychological impacts. Two, extreme heat in particular causes very high rates of mortality and morbidity for people who are suffering with some kind of mental illness. Three, what we might call eco-anxiety or the threat of climate has a significant impact on people. And fourth, that impact is going to be disproportionate. It's not going to affect everybody equally. And I think it's also worth noting here that, you know, the communities that are most affected by climate change are often disadvantaged. It's elderly, it's uh, children, it's people who are living in poverty or often communities of color. Are they also disproportionately affected by mental health issues? A hundred percent. And I think it's helpful to think probably in two large categories. One is people that we already know are disproportionately impacted by so many things in our country due to inequity, right? So communities of color, as you said, seniors and children often disproportionately impacted. Uh, seniors in particular, extreme heat is very difficult for them, um, which then can create additional anxiety. The other group that's important to think about is people whose livelihood or lifestyle are very closely connected to the land. That might be tribal communities, it might be farmers, um, it might be people in rural communities, but when you're closely connected to the land because of, like I said, culture or work, then climate change is going to have a disproportionate impact on you because it's going to impact every other aspect of your life right. too. So of course the psychological or mental health impacts would also be more extreme for those groups. Yeah. Are you finding that being here at AGU 23, you're able to sort of talk pretty openly with a lot of people about this and, and get a, a good positive response about how you're trying to address these issues? I think because of COVID and all we've gone through in the last couple of years, people are much more aware of how these large scale events that impact everybody impact our mental health. Because we've all seen it. We've all seen what it's like to be stuck in your house um, for months at a time. Imagine in an extreme weather event in the future, what that's going to be like. We all know what it did to our children and our own mental health to not be able to go out, not go to restaurants, not you know, be able to be in public spaces. That could be part of our future. Doesn't have to be though, of course, and we could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, the you know, community in general seems to be extremely important to you know, getting through these kinds of events as we learned with COVID. So can you talk a little bit about the importance of community going forward. As you said, certainly from what we learned during COVID and other kinds of events, connection to community turns out to be really important in helping people um, recover more quickly and sort of recover better in the sense of, of achieving more whatever it was that was lost during the event. And I'm talking about extreme weather events like floods, hurricanes, etc. One of the things that's really exciting about the new National Climate Assessment, known as NCA5, is that there's a lot of hope in the document, even though it talks about the, the many negative potential events that are gonna happen as a result of consequences of climate change, and there is a lot. It also gives some examples of things that are happening at the community level, where people are working to mitigate the impact of climate change or to better adapt to climate change. And I think anything that gives people hope, right, that allows people to be part of the solution isn't just going to help us deal with climate change. It's actually going to help our mental health. So I think there's positive things in the NCA5 that might also give us some ideas of things we can do that can not only help climate change, but can help our mental health. It's good to end on a positive note here. Daniel Dodgen, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, Laura.